Hello and welcome back to another of these Synoptic Level 3 AAT tutorials. Today we're going to have a look through five questions in total that are going to appear on the screen on the left to make it easier to read and I'm just going to go through the answer for you here. So, in the first question we've got Bob, Christy and Amelia work in a partnership who create tables out of old wood. You are their accountant and you've been asked to prepare their partnership accounts for the year ended the 31st of March 20. Now we're told that Bob and Amelia introduced a further 20k of capital into the business on the 1st of November 19. We're told goodwill was calculated at 70k at the 31st of March and that there was no interest on drawings. And we're given this table here which shows that share of profits is 30%, 40% and then 30%. We're giving the partnership appropriation account for the year end the 1st of March 2020. So that's already been done for us. So we know what the salaries are, we know what interest and capital is, and we know what the profit for distribution is. And what we're asked to do is prepare the current accounts for these partners. So let's do that now. Let's get out a ruler. So we're going to want three separate columns here. So these three here are going to be all of your debits and these three here are going to be your credits and we're going to have Bob, Christy, Amelia and again Bob, Christy and Amelia and it's worth when you're doing these tables just to write down the percentage profit share sometimes you're asked to work that out in the exam so it's just good to keep yourself familiarised with it so the first things that we can see on here is I'm going to start with drawings for the month, for the year. So we've got £1,500 per month for Bob. So because this is for the year, we're going to times that by 12. And that's going to give us £18,000. Let's just write this here. So we've got drawings. And they are a debit, as we know. And then we've got 28000 for Christie, And then we've got 20000 for Amelia. The next thing we're told is that we have capital account balance brought forward and we have a current account balance brought forward at the start of the year. So we're going to take this current account balance at the start of the year and we're told that they're credits. So over here we're going to have balance brought forward and what we've got is 2k for Bob, £500 for Christy and 6.5k for Amelia. Next. If we go down to this table that we've got at the bottom, we need to type in salaries, interest on capital and profit for distribution. So all of those are going to be on this side as a credit. So we've got salaries, which are 16k, 20k and 25k. And then we have the interest on the capital, which is... 2.89k, 2.89k and 2.89k and then we want to take this share on profit and loss which is going to be 30, I'll write this out properly here, 30, 0, 9, 9, 40, 1, 3, 2, and then we have 30, 0, 9, 9. So there's no other information from this table that we need to input onto here. So what we need to do then is just to add all of this up here. So let's go down and work this out. So here we have 5989. Here we have 63522. And then here we have 64489. So over here we're not balancing at the moment because you can clearly see that the 5989 minus 18,000 is not going to agree back. So we want this total to be 5989, 63522 and 64489. So what we have is a balance carry forward on this side here. So that therefore if I put this just here it's going to be... 32989 for Bob, 35522 for Christy, and 44489 for Amelia. Let's move on to the next question. So 
So we're asked, what is meant by the term materiality? If you want to put the technical terminology behind what this is, what you could write is that materiality relates to misstatements, including omissions, they are considered to be material if they individually or in the aggregate could reasonably be expected to influence the economic decisions of users taken on the basis of the financial statements. So what that really means. So next question. So while producing a set of accounts for a partnership, Shearer identifies that there are business entertainment expenses that have been claimed on the VAT return. She realised that this was because previously there was one individual who prepared the VAT return and then a manager would review the return. However, the manager was away on holiday and the review was missed and instead the person who completed the VAT return also submitted the return. So the question is, identify what threats and ethical principles are most at risk here. So firstly, here there is a self-review threat, as there is no segregation of duty and the same individual is completing the return. And there is also a potential professional competence and due care issue here, as it calls into question the individual skill set as they recorded the business entertainment in error. So I hope you found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up if you liked it or you did find it useful. Consider subscribing and I shall see you on the next video.